Welcome to my latest masterpiece. This one goes by the name of Allure. The first thing you usually hear when a door opens is, wow. I'm Sarah Gore and welcome to Open House NYC. You are gonna love what we have in store for you this week and I am bringing it all to you from this four bedroom beauty on the Upper West Side. Overlooking Riverside Park with epic Hudson River views, this approximately 3,600 square foot home is located in a classic Gilded Age building that has been stylishly modernized for today's living. Just look at the open flow of this great room and imagine yourself entertaining here because I certainly can. It includes living and dining areas, plus a windowed kitchen outfitted with only the best, of course. High ceilings and handsome white oak herringbone floors add to the general sense of spacious luxury. The secluded primary suite is located in its own wing, which means peace and quiet, and it comes complete with a huge closet and a bathroom that feels like your own private retreat. Now let's get things started with interior designer Sarah Story at her very own townhouse overlooking Gramercy Park. This transformation of a 1918 building has been a long-term labor of love for Sarah and her family. And the result is a home that truly inspires her every day. See why. To me, good design is creating an inspiring interior. I'm Sarah Story and welcome to my house on Gramercy Park. Generally, as an interior designer, I create homes for my clients, but for myself, it's so much easier. It was all about finding pieces that really reflect my style and what I love. And I wanted you to feel that the minute you walked through my front door. This townhouse was built in the 1800s and I really love that you walk right into the dining room. I really wanted this space to have major impact so I wanted the artwork to create that. These original crystal chandeliers are a whimsical nod to the past. To bring in a little bit of color and pattern, I designed this terrazzo dining room table. This is not just a pretty space, I love to entertain. And every Friday night, this room is filled with our friends and family. Here in the living room, you can really appreciate the incredible architectural details in the townhouse. The intricate crown molding, the floor to ceiling windows, and the focal point is definitely the original marble fireplace. This room is right across from the park, so the natural light is amazing, and I love the double height mirror. I find inspiration everywhere, so I wanted to bring in a little bit from my travels. So these African side tables to bring in texture, these African walking sticks, brings a more nuanced feel to a space. And again, I kept the original crystal chandelier to pay homage to the past. In contrast to the living room, I wanted this space to feel more intimate and cozy. The first thing I did was paint the walls a dark green. And then I found this vintage Brazilian sofa with this cozy fabric and I paired it with this Moroccan rug. And for those candlelit evenings, I found these candelabras by Jermaine Gallagher. As you might have noticed, art is a recurring theme in my design. This is one of my favorite pieces. I love the color and pattern and scale. I was so inspired by designing my own home, I published a book around it and a few of my other projects. Okay, enough of the self-promotion, there's more to see. This sitting room is my favorite room in the house. I started with the wallpaper by Joseph Franck. I loved the pattern, the flowers, the color, and the scale. After selecting the wallpaper, I found this fantastic circular rug. And working off of that, I found these vintage Brazilian chairs. And to finish the space, I designed this velvet sofa. This space is all about lighting a fire and chilling out with my friends. In the kitchen, I wanted to really change it up. It's a much more modern space than the rest of the house. For the table, I wanted to go a little bit more rustic, and I paired it with these lacquered Chinese hat chairs. I find when you paint the ceiling a dark, saturated color, it really elevates the space. 
This is a great kitchen to work in and where I prepare all my family's meals. We decided to take the best room in the house and make it our bedroom so we could overlook Gramercy Park. That's why I created the bed right here in the center of the room. The headboard has a cozy bouquet fabric. The light is a bronze fixture and it casts a beautiful shadow on the ceiling. And this is a room I can really relax and unwind in. I designed my home with things that I love and inspire me. And I love sharing it with my friends and family. Thank you so much for taking the tour with me. Definitely check out Sarah's book, The Art of Home, out now. Coming up next, we are checking out an alluring Los Angeles estate with a name to match. We'll see you in just a few. Welcome back everyone. Now we are out in the Brentwood area of Los Angeles to explore this brand new custom built estate dubbed Allure. Designed and developed by Rampton Ray Nasrati, this place has everything you can think of and probably some things that you haven't thought of. All across is vast yet welcoming 14,000 square feet. Take a look. What's up, NBC Open House? Welcome to my latest masterpiece. This one goes by the name of Allure. Follow me inside. So the first thing you usually hear when a door opens is, wow, open floor plan, looking straight out to the backyard. Right above me is your custom moss wall with your skylight above. To the right, the family room with a dual-sided fireplace, which is also open to your main kitchen with the island breakfast nook. This bar is definitely the wow factor in this room. When they say go big or go home, we definitely went big with its own 14 feet stone island. The bar is also a conversation room. It's an area you sit there, you hang out, grab a drink, and of course, it's connected to the dining room, which you can mingle before you sit down for your dinner. One of my favorite features in this whole backyard is the sunken fire pit. Being able to look into this pool over here, the outdoor lounge, waterfall cascading into the pool. This is where you sit there and you enjoy every dollar you've spent. And again, even on this side, you're looking straight into the house and the outdoor cabana, which you can sit here and actually watch TV or the game from right here. Everything just flows. There's homes and there's homes, and that's what makes this so different. Having a pickleball court and your basketball court you can have a party here for about five or 600 easy if you really wanted to. This is a cool little water feature I added over here in the section before walking on the Michael Jordan court. Now let's go inside so I can show you the rest of this masterpiece. The top floor has seven bedrooms, each unique in their own design, but the one we're gonna walk in now is the primary. I don't know if I would even call this the primary. It's its own little house. You got approximately 2,800 square feet of just wow. You have your white oak wood slabs behind you, above with the same tone going on, dual-sided fireplace over here also looking into your primary family room with it wrapped in the travertine stone. This is just soothing. We have our reading corner over here, which you're sitting here just relaxing, enjoying a book. Again, looking outside its own private balcony with the fire pit. And then walking, you got this big primary bath. It's one of a kind. And this is where it comes to an end. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Till the next one. Coming up, we are down in Lower Manhattan for a look at this refined, modern apartment designed by Courtney McLeod. We'll be right back. Welcome back everyone, interior designer Courtney McLeod is known for her bold use of color, but in her newest project down in Manhattan's financial district, the palette was a bit more muted. So she created subtle visual interest with texture while bringing in pieces that are versatile and modern. Take a look. 
The thing that inspires me the most is helping our clients translate their unique personalities into a beautiful home. Hi, I'm Courtney McLeod, the principal of Right Meets Left Interior Design. We're in a recently completed two bedroom, two bathroom condo in the Fidei District. So this project was definitely an interesting challenge for me because the palette is a lot more neutral than what I'm typically known for. We really got to focus on beautiful textures and interesting finishes to inject some personality into the spaces. So let's take a closer look. So my goal for the foyer was really to establish a design identity for the home. So here I incorporated the client's favorite color and we curated a few of our favorite things and I wanted something that would pop against that. So this actually spins out and becomes a desk. I paired it with this incredible chagrin mirror. Now this is a material that you're going to see again in the apartment. I really love to incorporate elements like that to create a really cohesive whole. Now stepping into the main living space, it truly takes your breath away. I mean, how could it not? Just look at these views. What did I tell you? And with views that incorporate both old New York and 21st century New York, I knew the design had to be urbane, sophisticated, and modern. The starting point for the design of this seating area is the custom rug. And it incorporates both greens and curves. I designed the sofa with a really angular profile, and I picked a fabric that's the same green as the rug. I just love this coffee table. It really is functional art and it includes a chagrin finish. And what's really cool is it actually moves around so you can create new designs whenever you feel like it. The client is lucky enough to have outdoor space. So I decided to continue our themes. You'll see curved shapes, a bit of angular shapes to complement, all of it to create an area that's perfect to enjoy our amazing views. I designed the dining table and chairs to fit this space perfectly. I had these brass details incorporated into the countertop and we used this to create a really angular shape within our curved outline of the table. With these floor to ceiling windows, window treatments I knew were going to be a focal point. I love how it softens everything and really ups the ante of the design. For my client's bedroom, I selected a serene blue palette. You'll see that on the walls, on the bed, and accents in the rug. But calm design does not have to be boring, as you can see from our feature wall. We chose what I like to call a tumbling cube pattern, done in wood veneer, and we upholstered the bed in this light blue velvet. And one of my favorite pieces is this ceiling light. I love the romantic glow and notice how the shape is reminiscent of the shapes in the carpet. Even with all the action outside these windows, this room maintains a sense of peace. I am so delighted with how the design of this home came together. I hope this home has inspired some new ideas and I look forward to seeing you on the next project. Coming up in just a few, we are in Beverly Hills for a tour of this updated architectural gem. We'll be right back. Welcome back everyone. Now we're in Beverly Hills to tour this updated classic originally designed in the 1940s by pioneering Los Angeles architect Paul R. Williams. This gated estate has been updated by interior designer Karen Brady who used a muted palette, soft textures, and comfortable furniture to complement the architectural details. Take a look. Hi, it's Karen Brady with Karen Brady Interiors. I'm showing you today one of my latest projects in the Beverly Hills area. This home is a Paul Williams design built in 1941 originally, and we've revamped it. So lots of interesting design touches to give it that elevated feel. So let's go have a look inside. 
So this is a precursor basically for what the rest of the house will look like. It's really kind of a mixture of antiques, layering, textures, makes it very curated. And that being said, follow me in here and we can talk about the living room. We used a lot of the original components that were here. All the beams are original and we added in a lot of the Ralph Lauren furniture and found pieces. We did a lot of flea market shopping, like you know, a wooden jug from the Paris flea market. Those are the types of things that make your place feel special. And so the chandelier is from Italy. It's a wow factor and it makes it feel like there's a touch of being luxurious in here. So the nice part about this room and about the rest of the house is that the inside sort of bleeds to the outside. It just all really works together. This is the place where everyone is congregated and relaxing, but now we can walk into the place where the work is done so that someone can actually afford this house. So here we are at the office. It's very masculine in here. And why did we add a bar? because every good office needs a bar. Inspiration was old Hollywood movie star, smoking a cigarette, having a martini. Not that that all happens in here. We have some of the dark brown, which reads very office, but we also have the white shutters that lead into sort of a natural space, which I think the combination of the two makes this room a place where you really want to spend a lot of time. So here at the top of the stairs, we have the primary suite, but my favorite place to show you right now is the guest room. This feels to me like country English estate, some place where you go for the weekends to relax and enjoy yourself and be part of nature. It makes sense that I would have the Ralph Lauren furniture pieces because I did work for the home collection 13 years. And this all kind of flows into the main room. The textures are all soft, they're inviting, with all the different throws and the different furs. Overall, this room is just that wonderful getaway. Outside, you're gonna find lots of entertainment spaces, but this is kind of the end all. This is our koi pond. This koi pond wasn't originally here, so we added a couple elements to the outside. This space is made up of the bamboo, the water element, and of course, our koi. And out here, we have our golf hole. I think the owner thought he was gonna be Jack Nicholas, but I'm not sure. We've got a tennis court, we've got the bowling alley, we've got the guest house which overlooks the tennis court. And don't forget the pool, and you have your very own piece of classic Hollywood. Thank you so much for stopping by, I hope you enjoyed it. Coming up after the break, we are back in Los Angeles. We'll see you in just a few. Welcome back everyone. Now we visit this bespoke home in the Hollywood Hills with architect Kristen Becker. Her clients wanted a modest footprint, one more reflective of a New York loft. The result is a highly considered curated home inspired by an unlikely combination of the medieval and the industrial. Take a look, see what she did. Hi, my name is Kristen Becker. I'm a principal and partner in Muda Studio. I'm excited to share with you a project I designed for Brian Henson and Mia Sara, a modern castle in the Hollywood Hills. This project was a beautiful challenge in the sense that it was built on a very steep slope. So we designed the house to feel nestled and also perched out into the landscape. The clients are coming from a creative background, so we have a very public onstage feeling, and we have a very private backstage feeling to the house. Let's go check it out. Here we are in the great room, and a great room it is. And so we wanted to bring a little bit of a castle feel to the space, in particular with kitchen, living, and dining spaces working together. 
We really wanted to take advantage of the view, so we designed exterior sunshades and drapery to allow you to see out, but also feel blocked from the sun. The kitchen space really needed to feel connected to the living and dining spaces, so we chose a delicious dark walnut finish with steel accents and a concrete countertop. The black and steel with a pop of brass feels a little bit playful. Even though we're in a great room, we didn't really want to make the spaces feel like they were in a museum. We wanted to feel relaxed and refined. We picked up on the caramel colors that we see in the tapestry and found an already worn vintage leather sofa paired with some eclectic little pieces that are playful and fun. We also wanted to insert a few modern elements. We designed this custom piece that we thought was really fun. This bicycle chain chandelier paired with this beautiful fin jewel table seems to just give this eclectic kind of funky vibe. This kinetic window was really to create an extension of the dining space out to the quintessential Los Angeles landscape. So if you follow the West Terrace, that leads us to the workshop. And of course, we wouldn't have a Henson home if it doesn't have a few Muppets. It was really important for Brian to have a place that he could let loose and be creative. So we wanted the space to not be precious, the funky German beer hall picnic tables and a very simple workbench so you can do your woodworking and then a large shelving unit that can house all of the different creative projects. Thank you so much for joining me today on the tour of this modern castle in the Hollywood Hills. I hope to see you soon. Bye for now. Give this video a thumbs up and let us know which of these gorgeous homes featured in this episode was your favorite. So many to choose from. Which will you pick? <laughs>